everyone richard solomon with an all-star co-host cast we have uh rick frischman hey rick hey richard we... how are you good to be with you again I love you uh antonio Sayat from rocket green productions hey richard how are you and All our good. and our special guest is adam lazar and adam lazar uh tell us the name of your company and what is so magical about what you do as far as being an environmentalist and an entrepreneur at the same time yeah, it's, uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, uh, Asarasi is uh, really showing the world a renewable and sustainable source of pure water from a plant-based source that allows us to take water uh, from a sustainable, renewable source in plants that doesn't deplete our groundwater table while incentivizing the consumer to pay for uh, a new water product, perhaps the purest form of water in the world, uh, that also incentives economically maple producers all over North America. Everybody wins. The consumer pays the same price for what they buy today. In exchange, maple farmers win, and our company grows. So it's a very complimentary cycle, and that's what we're doing. And I tasted the product, and it actually has a great taste because it's so clean. It's so, it's so, it's so just so clean. So thank you. Wow. Uh, Adam, well, I, Adam I, just talk there. up a little louder if you can, okay? Because we'll make sure we get sure. get all those to talk as loud as you can. Okay, Antonio, you had a question. Yeah, Adam, I'm a very sustainable guy, and I do like uh, green festivals. I do speeches all over the country and universities. And when I saw your website, I was completely blown away because I heard of everything: growing your own food, you know. And, uh, you know, Richard has been interviewing a lot of interesting people, but I found your product very interesting. And I'm curious to know, how did you find this whole idea? And, and how did you know that, um, you know, it had to do with the maple tree? I mean, do other trees have water or is just uh, a specific uh, type of tree? Yeah, so, you know, I think... Um I, I, I guess you have two questions there, and I'll, I'll answer the first one first, is how did I come across this? How did I have, what's the aha moment or the genesis of the idea? And uh, the second question being, can we do this or expand upon this in more than one species? And, uh, you know, I think, you know, we all have opportunities that are all around us, and frankly, we just don't have the unique sets of experiences that allow us to view an opportunity with wide, eyes wide open. And I happened to have a unique set of experiences that led me to see this opportunity. I'd walked into a maple producer's farm in the spring of 2008 with my daughter, uh, you know, getting cabin fever and saying, okay, we can't go to the mall or one more restaurant one more time. Let's get in the car and get lost. And, uh, you know, found myself at this maple open house and seeing this maple producer uh, produce, you know, millions of gallons of the sap uh, that he just spent thousands of hours in the woods and all year preparing for to create a syrup harvest. And I see this six-inch drain coming out of his reverse osmosis machine where he was separating the sugar from the sap and throwing away this volume of, I mean, thousands of gallons an hour, almost 4,000 gallons an hour uh, out of this one wow. piece of equipment. And uh, I asked the farmer, what are you doing with that? And what is that? And I, you know, I'm a very, you know, environmentally thinking guy. I, you know, I'm, I'm not Superman, but I try. And, uh, you know, and he says, oh, no, it's just water. And I thought, oh, I mean, it's for water. What's? You know, what's this? He says, no, 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 this is the water we removed from the sap. Since it's really, you know, heavy water weight in this product. we got to get get that water content out in order to mix it. And I said, well, why don't you do anything with it? He said, so who'd want it? It's just water. And I said, oh, my God, the light bulb went off. I looked at the farmer. I said, would you sell that to me? And he kind of laughed at me like it was the most ridiculous thing he'd ever heard. And it didn't occur to me that was ridiculous because, you know, he was looking at it from a perspective of for a 55-gallon drum of of syrups, you know, if you were to compare that to oil, it's like, you know, 100 times more valuable than oil. Right. They call syrup liquid gold. And I said, gee, well, how much is there? So I, you know, immediately ran home and wrote this business plan. We had, you know, Mr. New MBA, I couldn't resist. And 
you know, and I started looking into the numbers of species. You know, you can look up wild foodism on the internet, and you'll find there's a, it's about 22 species of trees that you can actually tap uh, for their saps, uh, edible saps, and most of them are high value uh, sugar, uh, you know, and 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 high volume water, and so. When you look at different species, you have ash and box alder and, uh, uh, you know, all the maple species, the birch species. So you, you have right. 22 total different species, and this can happen basically in a ring around the globe between the 40-45th parallel. So it's, it's something that can be done across, uh, across the globe, which gives us a really interesting scalable model. Um, you know, when you look at the amount of availability in this resource, when you look at 18,000 farms doing this just in Maple, the, the statistic from the, the, the Forest Service says that only 3% of all the accessible Maple, that doesn't touch any other species, is tapped. And there's over a billion gallons byproduct in this industry. So that's wow. only 3% of the resource. So we have this wonderful resource available to us that we can touch. Now, does it harm the tree at all? This is... Oh, that's a great question. No, in fact, it's, it, it, you're like donating blood, uh, you know, what does it do to your immune system? It builds immunity. It builds uh, better resistance to disease and other threats against your immune system. In the wow. same or similar way, when you tap a tree for its sugar and sap content, it, we take about 6% of the available saps out of the tree. And this is a sustainably done process because the farmers, you know, they're managing their, their forests. And so, uh, you know, what good is it them to do if they harm the trees in the process? So it increases the disease and pest resistance of the plant. Um, and this is going to naturally uh, transpire through their crown and out of its, um, uh, you know, bark system uh, and trunk system, uh, whether you tap it or not. So we're literally tapping into an ecosystem that's giving it to us at a point in the tree where we can access it versus waiting for it to be transpired through its crown where we can no longer uh, capture that. So it's, it's a, a really it's, it's like a living well. Wow. Now, now yeah. how, how clean is that water? Because it, it seems like it's almost pure. Well, yeah, the, the root structure of the tree. So here's the beauty of sustainability in this model. So the root structure takes in moisture from the earth that would never reach our groundwater table. Because it's, you know, it's drinking from the earth. And it's transpiring that water through its crown, right? And that happens in, in an average maple tree in the height of July. Uh, you know, you're talking about a gallon a minute being consumed by that one tree uh, in, the, in the heat of July. So, you know, a, a standard tree will, will consume several hundred thousand gallons of water on a yearly basis in one tree. And that's water that you never, ever see hit the groundwater table. So tapping into it, um, you know, really gives us this access to this wonderful resource. And the tree uh, purifies the water that it's absorbed from its root system through its trunk and uh, ultimately gives us, uh, basically, when we extract it, we get four elements We get uh, besides the water itself. So we get pure water, which then has sugar, which is the maple sugar, which is then removed by reverse osmosis. And then we have three other elements, potassium, manganese, and calcium, which are naturally occurring in the tree. And so we have, if you were to make a comparison to other pure water products or supposedly pure water products in the market, we are ten times purer in terms of our mineral and dissolved solid content than, than, uh, than any other product on the market today. Have, have you eyed doing any of this with like agave or anything else, that, which is sort of uh, some kind of either nectar or sap that's already in production somewhere else? Uh, in, in, in terms of uh, flavoring or, or looking at other uh, sap products to, to, uh, to bottle up? The last question. To see if well, this, I think the, the, there's, there's opportunity to look at, there is a sap industry out there. So there you'll see products like, uh, you know, maple water in the marketplace, um, you know, coconut water, arguably a tree water. Uh, you would see, you know, other, other plant-based, supposed plant-based waters that are very nutrient-rich or sugar-rich or, um, you know, carbohydrate-rich. But at the end of the day, those are positioned in the market space uh, with a very finite shelf life that reaches a, a, a health conscious consumer with deep wallet and they really don't have an impact on the bottle of water space because they're not looking to and they, they really can't um, those resources uh, either take away from other areas of, of opportunity for farms or, or have other um, impacts on 
uh, industry that uh, that challenged the industry to either do this or do that. Because we're a value-added product, we can take a pure water product that is considered a byproduct that they don't have a use for and add value to the marketplace and position it in such a way that is uh, uh, really opportunistic. The consumer gets a, a, a truly plant-based water that can sit next to a Pellegrino or Perrier, uh, and Osirasi can be that, that new kind of category of plant-based waters that is truly just pure water. Uh, but without compromising other ecosystems in the process and without compromising your wallet. So for a dollar fifty a bottle at retail, we can do the right thing for the environment and the right thing for our wallet as consumers. Right now, how right. many how many thousands of gallons are you sort of capturing? Well, um, this over the last twelve months, I keep in mind our company's about a year and a half old. And over the last 12 months, we we, uh, we dialed up over a half a million units, and uh, and we're growing. Um, we've uh, partnered with over 15 farms to date in New England, and we're actively asking any maple producer to come to our uh, to come to our website and uh, and sign up as a maple producer. Um, we. Here's the other impacts that we have, we, we started a benefit corporation to benefit the maple farms. Uh, it's called Asarasi Farms. And the, the Asarasi Farms basically allows maple producers to, um, you know, sign up as a supplier to Asarasi and in exchange for their supply partnership as a benefit corp, not only do we give them a small piece of equity in the company, uh, but we also, that allows us to pay them dividends and create a co-op-like structure around the industry at the same time. I'm using the benefit corp model uh, to to a uh, you know to a degree that it's never been used before because it's such a new model. Are, are you just blowing everybody's mind with this innovation? Oh my, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, yep. it's interesting to hear people's reaction and and, and uh, you know you go out there and tell your story and people look like look at you like you're a three headed monster because you just can't believe what you just told them because it, the biggest challenge that people have is I say, I can't believe no one's ever done this. I can't. Why has no one ever done this? The obviousness of it is so there that uh, it just it smacks you in the face with common sense. Well, timing is everything. <laughs> By the way, just uh, for everybody listening, uh, you said it awfully fast, but the website, I mean, the, just say it slowly, the spelling, so everyone listening can get it. It's A-S-A-R-A-S-I is the name of the, the water, and it's A-S-A-R-A-S-I dot com. So just uh, nice and slow for folks listening, and I'm going to take you to this beautiful website um, where you can learn all about this product. And uh, now where can they get this water, by the way? Uh, um, on your site, I see a few different stores, but uh, can they order directly from you as well? You know, we, we don't um, we don't sell direct to public. Uh, you know, by the time we would get it to the consumer, it would be cost ineffective, and we want to keep right. the price, uh, you know, <clears throat> at parity with market. So we, we do partner with uh, uh, about ten distributors here in, in the New England and, and um, uh, Atlantic states. And so, you know, anyone in, in the retail space can go to their their traditional distributors like UNFI or KE or or Baldor Foods out of New York and bring it into their stores if they have customers asking for it. Um, however, uh, we do have uh, relationships that are coming online right now with ShopRite. Uh, so we anticipate being in, in several hundred ShopRite stores in the next 30 to 60 days, and we meet uh, again with those folks uh, next week. So that's, that'll be their, their time to place their orders and make those final commitments. Uh, yeah, you know, Shaw's has made a commitment to put us into their star markets, Price Chopper has, uh, has uh, told us that they would carry us in a select number of their stores, and uh, we received a um, you know a nice uh, uh, you know commitment from from top stores to carry us throughout their ecosystem. So we have uh, what we estimate to be five to six hundred or so grocery stores coming online over the next sixty to ninety days, um, and that's and that's kind of as we're growing, we're a very young company, so you know it's we're we're a little bit ahead of ourselves, but. If you go to the website, asarasi.com, uh, A-S-A-R-A-S-I.com, uh, you can go to where to buy, and you can click on the Google Pin Map there, and you should be able to find you know, any number of restaurants or stores 
uh, independent retailers in your area that currently have the product. Um, and uh, you know, you'll be able to see, you know, where exactly is the easiest for you to get it. So I encourage you to do that. And, and if you don't see a place today, keep keep looking for us because you will find us. Uh, you know, something amazing happens every day. You know, Morgan Stanley uh, out of the International Restaurant Show came to us and said, this is the most phenomenal, sustainable product we've seen in a long time. We want to share this with every one of our employees. So for Earth Week last week, they we made the debut in all Morgan Stanley buildings in New York City. And thousands of Morgan Stanley employees can now buy us for $2 a bottle in the Morgan Stanley cafeterias. Uh, and, and so we, we find ourselves positioned in a way that Companies like to show their social um, activism by embracing our product and sharing that with their employees. People share their social and environmental uh, activism when they share our product and our story. And I think it's one of the reasons we're here today having our, our conversation with you folks. That's awesome. By the Adam, let me ask you a question, Adam. Um, here's the big question I want to ask. Is it bottled in glass or plastic? Oh, my God, glass, absolutely. Uh, and, and you know the obvious reason for that. Um, Very good. There's, there's, a good there's, a, there's a great environmental reason for that. There's a great economic reason for that. Um, you know, when you're in plastic, obviously the impact mm -hmm. on the environment and is, is terrible. Um, you know, glass being silica and, and um, you know, it's, it's easy to recycle infinitely, but it also gives us a, an indefinite shelf life in our pipe. So there's a good... You know, when you look at being a, you know, being a sustainable business, it doesn't mean that you actually have to compromise. You, you, sometimes you get ba greater benefits by being right. a sustainably focused company. In this case, we absolutely do get a, a greater benefit. So uh, we get a longer shelf life from our product, and uh, and we also get the recyclability aspect as well. Do Very you, good. Do you have enough capacity to handle all this growth? Uh, we do. I mean, just today, for example, we signed up another million gallons just today of, right. of you know, water contracts with farms. And that's how excited they are to be a part of this. Um, right. And, you know, to put that in perspective, you, you know, you would produce uh, uh, somewhere around the two and a half a million cases. You know, so, it, you know, you can you can start to see how quickly that can scale, um, you know, just in, 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 you know, just a couple supply partnerships. Well, that's pretty. All right, this is Richard Solomon, Antonio Sion, and Richard Solomon with Rick Frischman. Yay! And uh, you're listening to uh, Taking Care of Business. We'll be right back. We're talking to Adam Lazar. And right now, uh, Rick is in his backyard tapping one of the trees. <laughs> so we'll be right back. <laughs> keep, keep it locked in. And, and we'll be right back after this quick break. All right, welcome back. Richard Solomon, Rick Frischman, Antonio Sayant with Adam Lazar. And uh, we're talking about probably one of the most exciting new sustainable businesses that we've, we've come across in a long time. And uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, so in continuing your, your story, you get all these tree uh, farmers, uh, the maple syrup tree guys, to give you their water. How do you then get all that water and, you know, I guess, you know, store it and then process it um, in a way that makes sense without having pipelines, <laughs> and, and, right. you know, or rail cars, you know? You, you know, it's, it's a great question, and, and it's one I spent a long time noodling on. I mean, it is not an easy solution. Uh, and, you know, when I first saw this opportunity, you know, my, it was 2008, so we're going back almost 10 years now, you know, and at the time, you know, so uh, I, I thought to myself, I said, you know, geez, this, this looks an awful lot like the dairy industry. But okay. yeah. look at the infrastructure requirements that would be needed in the dairy industry. I mean, if you, you take the, the product name out of the equation and inserted the word milk, well, you would have the exact same model. Farms producing a large volume of liquid that needs to be, you know, transported to a processing facility of, you know, some kind that can process it safely and then bring to market uh, this product in a way that, that um, is cost-effective and scalable and, and, you know, and, and efficient. 
And so, you know, that was really, I mean, it wasn't anything, it wasn't real rocket science here. It was just literally modeling after the dairy industry and saying, hey, we need people that can handle and haul this product in a safe way. They're used to high stringent quality requirements. And so that's what I did. I partnered with, you know, farms that had a, a high volume byproduct to sell. Uh, you know, we paid them great money. We paid them uh, 10 cents a gallon for something that they were discarding uh, with no market for before. And uh, interestingly enough, when you do that, uh, the farms literally doubled their profit with no added labor. We roll up a, you know, 8,000 gallon tanker to the back of their sugar shack, which is the, you know, kind of the, the uh, uh, layman's term for, uh, you know, uh, maple processing facility and you know they're processing so much that in less than two hours an hour and a half we're filled 8,000 gallon tanker and uh, that moves out to the processing facility where we then you know uh, do quality checks on it upon receipt and process it for its purity and uh, you know put it through the the, uh, the manufacturing cycle where it's you know it's very simple we don't really process as much at all we add a little carbonation for mouthfeel and you know put it in the bottle bottle and label and, and, and into the cartons and out the door it goes to the, the the storage facility where we then distribute from so where, where some companies get the luxury of multiple inventory turnovers a year uh, we get the we get the uh, the unlucky or <laughs> unfortunate uh, one inventory turn, uh, but we do mitigate uh, the risk of, um, you know, missed opportunity or missed forecasts by freezing. So we actually freeze a uh, Olympic-sized swimming pool of 300-gallon ice cubes. I'd like to make the world's biggest margarita with it. <laughs> up for the oh. and go for a Guinness record. So, you know, why don't we go for that? And we'll have you'll have me back on the show talking about the world's biggest margarita made from tree water. <laughs> I'm calling Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> so, and where's your facility, by the way? Where Where are you hauling all this water to to uh, to process it? Sure, we have a, a great partnership with uh, uh, actually New York's oldest family-owned business called Mayer Brothers. They are the largest cider bottler and processor in in New York State, and uh, they're out of West Seneca. And uh, you know, I'm very proud of that relationship because, the, you know, we, um, we've worked very hard with those folks over the last, you know, um, three years to really bring our product to market. And, uh, you know, they've been very instrumental in helping us get there and they continue to be a solid partnership with us. Uh, and, and, and why I'm so proud of that relationship is not just because what they've helped us with, it's but because of what they also do. And, um, you know, they, they, they buy from exclusively 200 New York family-owned farms and crush hundreds of uh, tons of apples, um, hundreds of thousands of tons of apples every single year and bring their products to market. And, you know, so very much no different than, than you know, tree water or uh, maple juice. You know, they, they're harvesting apples and apple juice. So it's a, it's a great uh, symbiotic relationship where we can leverage their their great facility and, and our relationships in, in uh, the western part of New York State to be able to create uh, opportunities for maple farms in that location, opportunities for them in their bottling plant at a time of year where you know, they don't have a lot being processed in that in the in the glass plant where we're, we're being processed. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we have just development of great relationships, great partners with, you know, we tried to build that infrastructure today it would cost us tens of millions of dollars. And so we found great partners in, in Mayor Brothers and, and folks from Western New York. Well, that's a depressed area, too. So anything you can do to help, you know, upstate New York is fabulous, too. It, it, it absolutely is. Um, you know, it's, it, we're creating jobs and creating economy. And, and that's, that's the, you know, we just, um, you know, we just hired two folks in, in Buffalo this last week. And, you know, we're going to continue to do that. Um, and it's just, as a growing company, you know, making an impact on areas of, of, of the region that have, you know, economic hardships that need economic opportunity, uh, yet again, another impact of our business. You know, it's, we're creating economies out of waste streams, and, and that to me is the most exciting thing that, that we could have done. Yeah, how about international? Do you ever think about something like that, like areas where, uh, you know, 
you know, poverty. Like, uh, it's so hard to reach. They have to walk like 20 miles just to get water and bring it back. And if it's something that, that the trees are like close by and like, like for instance, Africa or, or something like that, uh, it could benefit them, something like this now. Well, uh, you know, when I, you know, when I first got in this business, I looked at maple from a perspective of, uh, I know nothing, right? I'm a product developer right. in the military and law enforcement space, making defense related, you know, protective devices for soldiers and law enforcement folks. I had no business being in the beverage business, right? I guess they say, or in the maple business for that matter. And you know, I looked at it and I get, I had the same question you did, you know, is where can else this be done? And, 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 and I think, you know, when I started evaluating what really makes this work is, is this, um, this cyclical period of warm days and cold nights that we find here in New England in, in the springtime and the fall. And so this can actually be conducted in two seasons out of the year, although we traditionally see it done here uh, in the springtime because, well, the sugar content is greater at that time. Um, you know, this, but this, this can't has to be done in a place where you have high volume of sap producing trees. And uh, in order to be done cost effectively, there has to be a primary product like sugar, uh, maple sugar, in this case, birch sugar or birch syrups or something else in another species case, in order for this to actually be a, you know, unless you're going to pay 5 or $6 a bottle, which then, of course, doesn't make sense in impoverished nations. Um, you know, so there's a couple market dynamics, and then, of course, temperature and, and geologic, uh, geographic, should I say, dynamics working for or against this. It depends on how you look at it. Right. What, what states in the Northeast and the Atlantic, region have you know a maple syrup industry because everybody thinks it's, it's just um, sort of it, new york and vermont well it's um you know it's interesting you know you can actually produce maple uh, syrups and birch syrups uh, uh even walnut syrups uh, as far south as tennessee as far north as as quebec uh east minnesota and west uh, excuse me west of minnesota east of maine so there's a huge swath of the United States. It touches about a third of the nation and then Canada. There's about 11 to 12 producing states uh, that can actually produce these products. Uh, and so you know, we, can, we can literally have impacts in every, every part of, uh, of you know, the Midwest all the way to the Northeast uh, uh, to some of our southern, um, uh, southern partner states. So it, it, it's really um, an enormous um, opportunity. And... Um, uh, to me, it's it's so opportunistic that um, you know you look at the bottled water industry in the United States alone, and 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 it's you know fourteen billion dollar space, and you look at you know how it's growing from to be the number one consumable beverage category above and beyond carbonated soft drinks, because people are getting wise to the fact that there's you know, sugar and disease associated with high consumption of sugar and, and processed sugars. And so, um, you, you know, this is nothing but opportunistic for every farm that's involved in this, in processing of syrups of any kind. Let's talk about dirt for a minute. Talk about the soil dynamics, because obviously, I guess you need a certain kind of soil that retains at least enough water to be able to be a delivery system to the tree itself. So how does all that interplay? Uh, well, sure. So I'm, you know, I'm coming from a perspective of the average bear here. So I'm not, uh, you know, a scientist by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so I, I would be remiss to say I, I know what I'm talking about in that respect. But what I would say is this, is that we all know the basics of the water cycle, right? You know, and, and I mean, uh, every fourth grader in America can tell you that plants consume water and transpire water through their crown, creating atmosphere, which creates rain, which creates the water cycle, right? And, 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 that, and that goes on and on and on. So even in drought conditions where plants are surviving, plants are absorbing moisture uh, from the earth all the time, and they're consuming that. And... Uh, so soil composition, I think, is 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 one question, and 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 
you know, water concentration or, or drought or uh, lack of drought conditions is, is probably a separate issue altogether. Um, so I think, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, the trees being able to do this, uh, you know, those warm days and cold night cycles often happen in periods of, uh, of low to no drought, you know, in, at the, the spring uh, and fall months where we either have, you know, the fall rains or the, or the spring melt, spring thaw. So um, it allows us to get into the time frame where the, these trees are not truly affected by water conditions. So a condition, I really couldn't uh, speak to that per se, but, um, you know, in terms of water quality, it, you know, the tree is a natural purifier. Right, it pure, I mean, it's the lungs of our planet. If you think about it that way, we've always known that it, you know, takes in uh, carbon dioxide and produces oxygen, right? And that's that's a beautiful thing about uh, trees in the world, and that's why we we have even set aside one day a year to celebrate them. Uh, but one thing that we don't pay attention to often enough is the fact that they also uh, absorb a lot of water and can be considered a living well during certain periods of time of year. And then if we just consider the, the for the moment that we have truly interesting sources that, you know, even if it doesn't replace all of our groundwater consumption, even if it doesn't do that, even if it replaces 20%, because it's producing 20% of the time, we've done the environment a huge favor by taking the load off of the stress off the water table and, 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 and being able to utilize a different resource. And so I, well, I like to tell people this, and, and you know, it's, it's you know, you don't, we don't sell a bottle of water. We have a product that we sell that manifests itself in the form of a bottle of water and you can enjoy a great drink. But what we do sell is the paradigm shift in the way people think about consumption of natural resources. Because a bottle of water, there's lots of products that taste good out there on the market. You, you have your, many of choices. Uh, and there's 200 bottled water brands out there. And water, at the end of the day, elementally is pure water. It comes from different sources and it all has different levels of purity and that's fine and they all cost about the same roughly speaking but none of them have a positive environmental impact and so when you can make the conscious choice of do this not that for the same price and take that out of the equation now we can sell a higher level of consciousness and engage a higher level of participation with people that then looks to support the environment in terms of you know, soil quality and, and water content and, and all those other wonderful impacts that we can continue to improve upon. It's, a, it's an incredible Will story. you be selling this throughout the whole country? I mean, looking at your website, it looks like it's only available mostly in the Northeast. Uh, are you, will you be expanding so everyone can get this? Uh, that that's our plan. Uh, you know, as you know, when you start a company like this, I, I would say that the, <laughs> you don't realize what what uh, you know, what you got yourself into until you find yourself in the middle of it. <laughs> and you know, when we got into the, the beverage business, I, I was, oh, this is a piece of cake, I can make a beverage, and then you realize, oh, there's you know, anybody can make a beverage, and suddenly there's thousands of people competing in this space because it's a low barrier to entry, and. Uh, so our goal is to bring this product all across the country, uh, but that takes time, right? It takes participation, and it takes distributors, and it takes retailers, and and endless amounts of buckets of money, right? And that's uh, you know to tell our story and get our get our name out there and get folks participating, and and so there's there's always the barriers that uh, that to take it to the next level. So we said, you know, what can we do today? Um, so over the last 12 months, you know, when we ran our first full production run in 2016 in April, uh, you know, we said, let's focus on New England. That's where we are. That's where our product is made. And that's the market that we can affect the most. And we did, we did well. We went out to market and we found ourselves in several hundred stores of distribution between a variety of different channels and doing well. And, uh, and now, um, you know, we're, we're going into, you know, regional grocery, and, and that will parlay into national distribution uh, through the distributors that we've partnered with to bring us into the regional grocery chains. So it is definitely scalable for us. We hope to see ourselves in, you know, Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and Sprouts and, you know, all the big names, including Kroger's and Safeways and the, and the like across the country. Um, but uh, you got to start somewhere. I, I like to tell my 
nine-year-old daughter, you know, you can't eat the elephant all at once, but since you have to eat the elephant, where do you want to start? And I always recommend <laughs> starting somewhere like at the trunk, because at least it's the most palatable. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard it was a little chewy, but that's another story. <laughs> that's right. In, uh, we have a, a minute uh, before we have to take our, our, our next break. Uh, but maybe when we come back, um, talk a little bit after the break about the, your, your internal corporate structure. Not, not on a technical legal basis, but you, you, know, you need to do all this networking. And Rick, Rick Frischman wrote a book called Networking Magic, and he's a phenomenal networking guy. And it seems like one of the things that your corporate governance has is the ability to create great networking opportunities. So maybe when we come back after the break, you can talk about sort of how the company is sort of run and how all these great partnerships are, are procured and, uh, you know, really given like a lot of growth in life. So we'll, we'll take that up right after this break. This is Richard Solomon, Antonio Sayant, Rick Frischman, your co-host on Taking Care of Business and Rocket Green Radio, and we are with Adam Lazar, and we'll be right back after this. Keep it locked in. All right, we are back. Richard Solomon, Rick Frischman, Antonio Sayant, taking care of business with Adam Lazar. Again, the name of your company is? Uh, we, we are Asarasi, uh, spelled A-S-A-R-A-S-I, uh, at asarasi.com. And, and what does that mean? It's Latin? Yeah, this is the Latin for the sugar maple tree. And, you know, the idea was that our water, uh, we are a bottled water company, and then our water comes from the roots of the sugar maple tree, and therefore our name comes from the roots of the language, the Latin. There you go. Wow. All right. So before, the, before we started this, this last segment, and it's moving along, thanks to uh, Rick and Antonio, who are just tremendous co-hosts here. Um, how is the business sort of run from the top, and how do all you get all these great partnerships? I almost feel like um, the Joker and Batman, where he goes, where does he get all these great toys? <laughs> you know, like, like that. <laughs> where, where do you get all these great networks? <laughs> you know, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it, it really is the power of uh, the, the idea itself. The, the, the power of simplicity and the power of, um, you know, how engaging. When you tell someone the story for the first time, as all your listeners are hearing now, for likely the first time. Oh, I'm sure this is all brand new thing, to a lot of people out there. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the first thing that people say is, and every time I tell our story, and I, I, I go out and personally do a lot of sampling events and a lot of just, you know, kind of stumping and, and, uh, because that's what's required in any new business. And, and, you know, the first thing people ask me is, how the hell do you get water out of trees? And you know, when you tell them, they say, I had no idea. And then the second question they ask is, what does it taste like? And you give them a sample. And, how much is it? You know, and it's, it's that power of engagement and activation around this thought. You know, you, you've taught them something that they never even knew was possible. They never would have put conscious thought around. It never would have occurred to someone ever that this would have ever been even possible. And when you shape someone's perception of reality with honesty and truth, you don't have to make up marketing baloney to be able to sell a product. You just have to be. And I, what I love about this product and I love about this business is that we don't have to craft the story. The product itself is the story. And you then get to choose whether you want to participate in that story or not. And I think that's, that's, that's how powerful networks are made. Uh, you know, some of the best ideas, you've heard this expression over and over again, the best ideas are the simplest ideas. And I think that's uh, some of the simplest ideas with the biggest impacts, uh, I think, are the, are the power of the network. And so when you, you know, how do I get started in this? It's, it's an enormous, you know, task to say, hey, hey I'm going to do this. That's the easy thing to say. The hard thing to do is execute. And for years, I didn't know how to execute. I wrote home this, I went home and wrote this business plan. So inspired seeing this, and the light bulb went off in 2008. And I wasn't able to do anything with it until, uh, you know, 2013, late 2013, early 14. And why? Why did it take me, you know, uh, what is that, six years 
it wasn't because I didn't want to get off my duff and do something with it. It was because the, the sheer enormity of and scale of uh, and the barriers to get into this business uh, that existed that I was faced with. And so the only way I could get it done was networking. And so, um, I, you know, I had this idea, and I talked to my dad about this idea and, and uh, for many days, and my dad just said, Adam, don't quit your day job. Don't quit your day job. You're making great money, you know. Don't. Don't screw that up. You know, okay, Dad, I got it. You know, and I, he said, one day he called me up. He said, Adam, there's this business plan competition. You got to enter it. I said, oh, okay, what, what is it? And he tells me, well, there's this competition out of Buffalo called 43 North and uh, 43north.org. I said, oh, I got to go check that out. So I went and I checked it out. And, oh, wow, you know, the, the state of New York has set up this, you know, this business idea competition for anybody in the world to participate in and they're giving away five million bucks that was 2014 i entered that competition and out of some i want to say it was like some 12 or 13 thousand applications from around the globe from you know dry cleaners in india to you know god knows what else everywhere else they, they were swamped with applications and lo and behold we ended up in the top 100 wow and we didn't win that's, but we won. We didn't win any money. We didn't get to the finals. We did not win that year. Wow. And now I had credibility. But before the finalists were announced, I said, wow, you know, I've got credibility. People think it's a great idea. And so I solicited the support of Senator Catherine Young uh, out of uh, um, uh, Olean, uh, Cattaraugus County uh, in the district she represents there. I found a farm in the district that she represents there. And asked for her support, uh, went to the bottling plant that I could find in western New York and said, hey, can I have your support? This is what we want to do. And went to everybody I could find in that ecosystem and said, this is what we want to do. This is why you should pay attention because people think it's a great idea. Look, we're, you know, we're in the top 100 of this world's biggest business competition. And suddenly people started to pay attention, but before that I couldn't get anybody to answer the phone. Wow. And... Uh, I realized I had something. I didn't win. And I, I said, okay, well, i got to invest now. I, I made commitments to do this. I sold my house and invested the money in the business and, uh, you, you know, uh, <laughs> applied to that same competition in year two that they had it. Not even a response back. And, oh, I guess that's over. Year three, Hail Mary Pass. I applied to this again last year in 2016, and we won third place a half a million dollars in that competition. Uh and it's been just an absolute godsend to the company and truly such a huge opportunity for us as a, as a business and a going concern trying to compete in a very saturated marketplace. Um, so, you know, and just a little plug for those guys, you know, 43north.org, they are a phenomenal, co uh, you know, uh, uh, business idea competition. They're taking applications now. So if you're one of those listeners that has a beautiful idea, go apply. Um, that's the power of networking, and it's about the power of relationships and supporting those partners that support you. And so every day that I go out there, I, don't, I look for to engage with people around the idea, and those people think the idea is so powerful that they want to support us. And in by way of supporting us, that we can support them. And so it's very symbiotic. Um, a great example, I went and spoke at the Connecticut Sustainability Business Council last night as one of their guest speakers and met some phenomenal folks in the uh, in the sustainability space, uh, David Levine, the founder of American uh, Sustainable Business Council, and uh, you know he came up to me after he he was the he was the uh, the keynote speaker. He came up to me after this. That was a great great talk he gave. I think what you're doing is absolutely brilliant. I want to help you. And I looked at him and I said, "That's great. Let's let's connect. I want to help you." Right, and it's 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 very symbiotic, and he laughed, and, and and but it's true. That's it's it's all about you know one hand washes the other for us. So you know that's you know to answer your question in a long roundabout way, you know, is our corporate structure and governance kind of networking? How did we cultivate this 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 culture of of network? Um, it, it's just a, the power of an engaging idea. I, I I take it you don't sleep a lot, but who who helps you? You know, kind of run sort of the big the big stuff. 
You know, and not not so by you name, know, but more like by you know job category, because I, I, it just seems like it's an overwhelming number of responsibilities. There's the marketing, there's the product development, there's the finding of the farmers, there's finding the tank guys, there's the processing, there's buying the bottles, you know, there's the packaging, there's the internet guy, there's the social media people. I mean, the list seems endless. And then, of course, you need you know to to uh, to go to forty uh, three north dot org. I'm sure you didn't just take something and, and convert to PDF and upload, and that was the end of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? you know. No, no. There, <laughs> you're, you're right. There is a sheer amount. Of, it, it, it is a lot of hard work. I won't you know, kid you. You know, this is, you know, oftentimes, you know, after the kids go to bed, that's when my day starts, and then you still get up from at 6 in the morning and, and do it all over again. So, you know, there's, uh, to me, this is a... Uh, this is not something you can do on your own. So how I really got started was I, I approached folks in business that I felt were knowledgeable, that could point me in the right direction, that could just, you know, be available to pick up the phone whenever I could call them. And, you know, so I found, you know, one individual with great business experience and started several brands in the, you know, the consumer space and, had worked with that individual, um, not very closely, but had enough of a relationship that I could ask them to be a mentor. And I just surrounded myself with a sheer number of folks I had previously worked with in one capacity or another that had different sets of unique experiences, maybe financial, marketing, social media in that space, um, brand building, you know, just manufacturing. So I just kind of cherry-picked folks that I knew had a set of experiences that I didn't have that would be available to me to, to help guide me in my decision making. And, and I think um, what, one of the things I learned as an officer in the Army Guard was, you know, you're, you're always going to be, you know, when you come in as an officer, you're often the youngest guy in the group and you have these senior sergeants you, you outrank and you don't learn, uh, you don't lead by force, you, you lead by example and, and, and Sometimes I think that's a misunderstood statement. You listen to those that around you have the operational mindset and experience that come from years of wisdom that help you lead uh, by example, their example. And so um, that's that's what I did, you know. And, and you can't, you, you know, it's it's truly in the strength of the team that I found my success. And 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 truly, we're. We're continuing to grow, and, and I, we haven't reached the milestones that I want to see the company reach yet. Um, so I think success is, is a, a you know moderate term, but um, yeah, I, I look at it as just surround yourself with as many wise people that are brilliant that you truly believe are you know light years ahead of you, and and uh, they'll help guide you. What is the greatest marketing challenge and what is the greatest manufacturing challenge that you have? Um, you know, marketing is, is in this space, is all about consumer awareness. You know, if nobody knows who you are, it doesn't matter how many grocery store shelves you're on. It doesn't matter how many restaurants have you available behind the bar. But if nobody knows to you, they don't see you, they don't ask for you, at the end of the day, they don't care about you because why? They, they don't know who. You, they don't even know you exist. So our biggest challenge today is 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 really engaging um, a lot of voices in the community. I, I like to believe that it, in today's with today's technology, it takes a community to build a brand. Just like it takes a community, uh, I believe to raise a child. You know, there's there's truly a lot of powerful influence upon a company, a person when you belong to a community and. Um, you know, with, with as much, you know, noise, uh, white noise that comes at us from our email and our Facebook and Twitter feeds and all the nonsense that's out there, we have to filter through all that noise and find those gold nuggets. And so it's very difficult to do in this space. So our marketing challenge is awareness and how we want to build awareness is by grassroots activism around the product and around the brand that people really align themselves with who we are and care about Asarasi um, as a company. And the way they can do that is go to asarasi.com, uh, A-S-A-R-A-S-I.com, and, and sign up for our newsletter and become involved with who we are and continue to and, and tell your friends and family about us that, hey, you know what, there's this company doing some great things that do this, don't do that at the same price, and everyone wins. And it's a really simple value proposition. So that's how we think we can overcome that. 
uh, manufacturing challenge. Um, you know, truly, really, it's always going to be a challenge, challenge, uh, you know, coordinating logistics of <laughs> thousands, potentially thousands of maple producers all over the region. And I hope to grow to be that fortunate that we're, you know, enabling that many family farms to make more money without more labor on their part. So, you know, as we grow, the, the challenges will change and shift, but um, I, I think uh, what will remain a constant is, is our dedication to solving those problems. Are there any testing involved? Uh, you know, I heard stories like, you know, trees get infected, obviously, you know, with bacteria and stuff like that. Um, do they test the maple or do they test the water before it's uh, all manufactured into the bottles? And filter. Oh, absolutely. We do. Yeah, we, we have a very stringent uh, HACCP plan, which is the hazard analysis and uh, quality control uh, procedure that is mandated by um, not just the New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets, but also uh, the FDA. And so we, we conform to, bo- you know, to both stringent requirements. We not only test and batch lot test our products, but we also finish, you know, finish product tests. Um, for adherence to, to high-level quality standards so that you know that when you open a bottle of Osterosity that that product has uh, been, um, you know, evaluated for, for any potential, uh, you know, issues with bacteria or, you know, any, anything you would imagine. Um, and so it's every single time we've tested this product and we, we, we go out to third-party analysis often, uh, you know, when you're, when you're a bottled water company, let's say you're taking water from a spring, no matter what your source, you have to t- source test your water. And there's allowable, under the FDA, there's allowable parts per million, let's say, of lead, cadmium, chromium, radon, you know, heavy metals, that uh, parts per million, yeah, okay, they're two, three, four parts per million, fine, they're allowable parts per million because, well, you know, groundwater has these elements in them, and, well, we, you can only take so much out, and if you're bottling up a spring water, you know, that can happen. When we test our product, uh, against uh, the same standards for, for groundwater sources, and we checked for about 75 different bad things that could potentially be in the product. And instead of finding parts per million anything, what we find is none detected, none detected, none detected, huh. 70, wow. uh, 75 times. And what we do find is manganese, potassium, calcium, all wonderful things for your body and, uh-huh. and pure water. And so it's, it's really been... Um, when you look at the testing requirements, we embrace them happily because we know we have this that high level of confidence in our our product, not just from the purity of the source, but the period you know the maintaining that purity in our process, and that um, we know we can achieve uh, the best quality standards in the marketplace. Well, we only have a minute left. Do you, are you guys going to do tours or things like that, or you know? Well, we 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 are engaging with. Uh, farm market vendors uh, so that we can reach a large number of folks at any given uh, location at any given time. So we've, we've, uh, we're offering farm market vendors uh, the opportunity to become brand ambassadors, and we're giving away a couple cases a month to each, uh, to one vendor at every farm market in New York State right now. Uh, so we're asking if you're a farm market vendor and you go to those markets, reach out to us at ambassadors at osirasi.com uh, and you know, tell us, tell us, you know, why you should be a brand ambassador for the brand, and, and we'll be happy to reach back out to you with opportunities to do that. And so, it's about that community building, and we're going to be out there using folks like that to to help leverage our name out there while giving them something fun and exciting to be a part of. Well, thank you so much. So, yes, we're, we'll be touring we're, everywhere. We're basically out of time, but we'll be your radio ambassadors uh, on behalf of uh, Antonio Sayant and uh, Rick Frischman and myself. I want to thank you for your time with us today. And uh, we'll be looking to uh, see your, your great success in the future. Uh, thanks, Adam Lazar, for being with us. We'll see everyone next week. Keep it safe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks.